Hi, Dave. Welcome to Oaxaca. Thank you, Susanna. We're here at the Seasons of My Heart Cooking School in Oaxaca with Susanna Trilling. And Susanna, what are you going to make for us today? Today we're going to make mole negro oaxaqueño, and we're going to make two types of tamales, one with chipiles, which is a wild herb, and one with strips of chili de agua, which is a native chili to Oaxaca that's fresh. Okay. Why don't you tell our viewers exactly what a mole is? Well, mole comes from the word, uh, an Aztec word, which means mixture or concoction, and it's used with different chilies, mixed with different nuts and seeds and spices, and all mixed together in one pot, and then you cook your meat and chicken on the side, and then it's later mixed into the sauce itself. Sounds wonderful. I'm going to get out of your way and let you cook moles and tamales. Great. Thanks, Dave. Susanna is fortunate that she has the help of her assistants, Paula Martinez, and her daughter, Francisca Marcus Martinez, in preparing this elaborate concoction. Paula is now grinding up the almonds, uh, the peanuts, and the sesame seed paste, the end of the sesame seed paste for the mole negro. And this is the traditional way that it's done here in Oaxaca. Many women still do it this way because they feel that the blender just doesn't have the right consistency, and they say that everything tastes more sabrosa, más sabrosa when it's made on the metate. They grind the chilies this way, they grind the tomatoes, the mil tomates or the tomatillos, and they also do all the nuts. Paula's also going to do the blackened seeds that we've charred from all the inside of the chilies as well. The next step is to add fresh thyme and Mexican oregano to the mixture of toasted nuts and sesame seeds. She's mixing together to make one final paste. Then we'll add that to the chilies that are blended and be fried, and the tomatoes and milled tomates. Then we're going to add all the other ingredients, and then we add this mixture as well. Susanna describes the unique chili peppers used in the mole negro. We're going to use chihuacle negro, which is a chili that's especially from Oaxaca, pasilla mexicana, which is a chili from the Zacatex, Mexico, then mulatto, negro or an ancho negro, chili guajillo, and also the chipotle meco, which is a type of seedless chipotle. The next step is to roast garlic and onions on a comal or griddle and then set them aside to cool. Now the next thing we're going to grill, we're going to grill the chilies. And we want to make sure that these guajillos that are the most red of all our chilies today, that they really get toasted black, because if they're not black, it won't give the mole negro its true color. Spices such as cloves, black pepper, and cinnamon are also toasted. One important step in mole negro is to blacken the seeds of the chilies being used in a deep frying pan. At the same time, Susanna fries the tomatoes and tomatillos together in a little lard or oil. By the time the seeds are blackened, the tomatoes and tomatillos are done. Even more ingredients are fried up for the mole negro, including raisins pan de muerto, or egg bread, and plantains. Combining modern and ancient technologies, while Susanna is using a blender in the kitchen to puree the chilies and the tomato tomatillo mixture, outside, Paula is grinding up the blackened chili seeds. The next step is to combine all the previously prepared ingredients into a mole sauce. In a cazuela or a clay pot, we have some hot lard here ready to go. It's smoking hot, and that's how you want it. We're going to put the puree of all the dried chilies that are mixed together into the pot and fry them. Susanna adds the pureed tomatoes and tomatillos, the grilled onion and garlic mixture, the nut mixture that Paula prepared on the batate, the bread, plantains, and raisins mixed with the toasted cloves, black pepper, and cinnamon, the blackened chili seeds, and even more interesting ingredients such as flame-toasted avocado leaves and some semi-sweet chocolate ground from the beans in the molinas or mills in the markets of Oaxaca. The thing about mole is you have your, your chicken or your turkey or whatever meat you're using cooked on the side and then you return the meat with the stock to the mole and you serve it. But the main feature when you get your plate, you serve it in a bowl and the main feature is the sauce, not the meat. And in, traditionally, in Oaxaca, it's not really served with a fork or a spoon. It's really served with a whole pile of tortillas. And your, your t tortillas serve as your spoon. And then you use your fingers to get the meat off the chicken or the, or the turkey. 
Mm, this looks about ready. Dave, come try some mole. I'd love to. Are I can't wait. Must be starving by now. A lot of steps in this recipe. Yeah. Mmm. Oh, Susanna, this is wonderful. Uh, how else can you serve this mole? Well, we use it to make tamales and mole negro, or also we, we make something called emolados, which is like enchiladas, but with a mole sauce. As you've seen, mole negro demands many ingredients and a lot of preparation, but it sure was worth all the work. My journey into the wonderful world of mole is one that I won't soon forget.